Welcome to the Mike and JD Show YouTube channel. Thank you for being here. I want you to do me a big favor before you check out this clip. I want you to hit the like button. I want you to throw in a comment and make sure you're a subscriber to this channel. And then I want you to share this video with your friends. Help us defeat the algorithm. And then if you like this content and you appreciate this content, please head over to patreon.com slash the Mike and JD Show and support the show. That is how we actually get funded to be able to do this. So we thank you very much for being here. Um, and now enjoy the. This podcast is a member of the Voices of Wrestling podcasting network. Visit VoicesOfWrestling.com to hear the rest of our great podcasts, as well as show reviews, columns, opinions, and updates across the world of wrestling. Uh, 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 uh. Competition starting to get thick. It's the click, so I hope you watch your A game. A man, no lame. On the track when we unite and spit. This isn't a game. Better bring your A game. And like I heard people that were mad about Copeland's um, promo Wednesday night. I thought it was good. I thought that, you know, Punk yeah, went I'm, out of I'm, way I'm to- interested to hear your thoughts about this because we, we yeah. have not talked. I have complicated thoughts. But I want to hear, yeah, I hear you. I'll go first and I want to hear what you got to say. I thought it was fine. I thought that I think what we've talked about how the Tony is terminally online and yeah. I, most of their most of their guys are too, except for Moxley. Like, so I think the company kind of thought that Punk did more damage than he probably did, mm-hmm. right? Yep. I think they kind of overestimated. However, I think that if Adam, you bring out Adam Copeland, he came out there and I thought he did a fantastic rah rah speech. Like, I thought he did a great job. Like, that was a guy who clearly loves what he's doing. And I like that they put a guy who's so associated with the other side out there to be like, hey, man, I'm here. I love this. I love this place. This is what I want to do. Fuck those guys. Fuck that guy specifically. This is awesome. And I thought, I thought it, for me, it landed. I don't think there's anything wrong with specifically a challenger brand saying, not like what Tony would do when he would talk shit. Cause I think that just, that kicks that, that, that wake sleeping giants a little bit, but there's yeah. nothing wrong with saying, this is why we're awesome. Mm-hmm. This is why we are awesome. Not them, us. This is what we do. So it, it didn't bother me. I thought it was I thought it was pretty good. And then he introduced, you know, Osprey and that went into that awesome match with Hobbs. Which is he awesome. introduced who? Great. He introduced Osprey. Who? Osprey. No, he introduced Osprey. <laughs> Osprey. He did. He, he, did. he said well, it in like the most Canadian way possible. He, he is in fact from Canada, so you know. He did say well Osprey. Yeah. yeah so I I I wasn't as high on the promo as you, but I also didn't have like a problem with it. I just found it to be completely unnecessary because i i didn't have like this negative feeling going into the show about what aew is and about their standing in the pro wrestling space um off of that cm punk promo i not you know when john moxley came out and did his raw raw promo after brawl out and after punk had you know got suspended in the different i felt i found that to be very necessary and i thought it was perfect for the moment he met the moment perfectly i found this to be like and I don't know whose idea it was. I get the feeling it might have been Adam Copeland's idea. I think because, so too. Because Tony Khan had hurt feelings over it. That's I just that's just the way I saw it. I was like, hey, my boss has hurt feelings. I'm gonna go out there and cheer this guy up. And I'm gonna go put him over and put his company over and just talk about how much I love it here and all the negative talk can can uh, you know you can kiss my ass all the negative talk. But that said, I think Edge is a very good promo. So he delivered it yes. well. It, it didn't land with me because I just didn't feel like I needed to hear it. Like it didn't. I, I wasn't in a place where I was like, okay, I, man, I, you know, I'm so down on the dumps of AEW. I really wish, like, some 50 year old WWE guy would come out and cheer me up a little bit. I, I just didn't have that in me. So, it, in my opinion, I, I was like, they're they're giving life to this thing that Punk did that I don't think they even need to give life to. Um, it just it's just totally unnecessary for me anyway. So I get what you're I get what you're saying. Um, I think that we think that stuff's always for us. Yeah. Like, I don't necessarily think that speech was necessarily directed at you or me. I think that speech was directed at the people who work there who I, might have been feeling it. And Tony totally specifically. specifically. Yeah. Well, never underestimate the shallowness of a billionaire. Yes, like, yes. They yeah. are, let's be honest, man. When you have, when your whole life people <clears throat> cater to you and kowtow to you because you're wealthy, you get very up in your feelings. Very, and who am I to talk about somebody being up in their feelings? But I mean, it's true. It's like you're, um, you're easily swaying, yeah. right? So I think that that was a little bit for Tony. I think it was a lot for the people that worked there because Punk was a guy who did the rah rah AEW thing, and then he goes on Ariel Hawani and talks about what a joke it is. And so it's like, oh, so all that stuff you said was complete and total bullshit. Yeah. So 
I I don't think that was necessary. Well, I mean, because clearly they didn't. The fans didn't feel it. They didn't go there to like be lukewarm to AEW. That was a great crowd all yeah, night. Yeah, they, they, they dude, the collision yeah. crowd on Saturday was great. Like <clears throat> their crowds are smaller, but I mean, like they're into what's going on. Like I think the AEW shows feel like the old shows again. So I mean, I think that was more of a hey guys, because sometimes you have to address your people. Right. And I'm troop. not talking about fans, yeah. like the troops. Yeah. Like you said, yeah. like, yeah. I don't, you know, you know, what it, you know what it reminded me of. Yeah. When, wait, uh, wait. I'm going to show my age here a little bit. Actually, sure, sure. I'm showing my age with the t-shirt. I'm t-shirt. I'm wearing stone cold and Brett. It's my favorite WrestleMania match. This mania week. So it's the best um, one ever. Yeah. So, uh, and I, I made this on my illegal t-shirt site. <laughs> I, I, saying, I, never, it from I was going to say, I've never seen that shirt before. I don't wonder why. Yeah. yeah. No, yeah, no, I, I made it. I sold it to myself and my, my t-shirt site got shut down by uh, Vince bastards. They were, they caught me for that illegal stuff I was doing, but, um, uh, <laughs> a dickhead. So, yeah. So we actually got, uh, I'm going to go, I'm going to go to the chat here in a few minutes, but I did see King of the North's, uh, question right here. And I want to address it because I think it's a good question. Uh, he rarely has, a, I'm just kidding. No, he always has good questions. So, um, he said, Mike, how would you compare the edge speech deal to the one Eric Young did? Um, what he's referencing is Eric Young did a speech, a kind of a raw, raw speech for the troops. Um, and I want to say, um, oh, God, I can't remember this. It was Kissimmee, Florida or the, the town, like right outside of Orlando for the taping. Kissimmee. No, no, it was sacrifice. It was New Orleans. It was yeah, oh. New Orleans for, uh, the TNA, the TNA show in New Orleans. Can't remember the name of it. I think it might've been sacrifice. It was the first show right after Scott DeMore had gotten fired. So Eric Young came out to address the troops, address the audience, but, really kind of give a rah rah speech to um to the to the team essentially um because they were they like they were like that was a necessary thing they were that that company was broken they had written like a love letter to Scott Demore they sent it to Leonard Asper to try to get Scott's job back like it was it was like dire like a dire situation people thought Josh Alexander was leaving all this stuff's going haywire we thought the whole company was burning to the ground turns out it's the same as it was before Scott left right not much has changed um, I felt it was necessary. I just didn't think that he delivered it very well. And also, he had actually done one previous to Hard to Kill. Right? He came out like when Hard to Kill came on. He did the same promo. And um, but that was before Scott had gotten fired. It was just more of a "Hey, TNA is back" type of promo. I thought that one was actually better. And then he does the same promo a couple months later, and I just didn't think that it was as effective. I like Eric Young as a promo. I think he's a very good promo, but. Um, but uh, I think Edge is a better promo. I think that his delivery was better. I just did not feel like it was necessary. Like AEW was not in the state that they were in after Brawl Out. Um, no. you, just had, like, a, you just had a guy that hadn't worked there since July of last year talk a little bit of shit on an MMA podcast, right? Mm -hmm. And he and really the only guy that he he only called out Tony Khan by name and, of course, Eric Young and Jungle Boy. He don't think he ever mentioned the Young Bucks, but we all know he was like, you know, alluding to them. So, um, I, I just that that's just my opinion. I didn't feel like it was completely necessary. Um, but again, I don't think it hurt the show. I don't think it helped the show. I don't think it did anything. I, I think it was, uh, if anything, all it did was cheer Tony up a little bit to have a guy that he probably looks up to quite a bit in Adam Copeland go out there and say nice things about him and his company. I didn't like I said I. I... I like rah-rah speeches, quite frankly. I am a rah-rah speech guy. Like, that's one of my favorite things to do. I'm a high school wrestling coach, man. I yeah. live and <laughs> I live and die by that stuff. So I like, like, I, I'm a firm believer in affirmations and like, you know, rallying the people you care about. So for me, that kind of shit lands. But I mean, yeah. like your mileage may vary. I don't think it detracted from the show. The fans no. were happy to see. Like they heard, you know, you think you know him. And they go fucking ape shit. Whenever, you know, <laughs> Copeland comes out there. Like the yeah. guy still has one of the best entrances in professional wrestling. Like he's like, you hear that. The people like they know Alter Bridge is coming. And they're like, oh, ah. Like it just, it's one of those type of a moments. So, I mean, I thought, I thought for an intro to a dynamite, it, it went just fine. And it. You know, I'd rather I'd rather see a thousand Adam Copeland rah rah speeches than one more Billy Gunn Jay White match. <laughs> okay, um, all time. Where does it rank on your all time bad AEW matches? Because for me, for me, it's I think, for, and I'll be honest, I've never seen an episode of Dark, and I've never seen the the new the new TV show for Dark. What's it called? Ring of Honor. I've never seen the new Ring of Honor TV. Um, so I I could not tell. So I I'm talking about Dynamite specifically. Where, where where would that rank like your all-time worst oh it's top five bad yeah worst. i mean like it's up there with the dark order thing 
I don't yeah. know if it's I don't know if it was worse than the Dark Order thing. That thing was that, that, that was that, that was really bad. That was horrendous, but man, they're like they're they made there, Jay White look like such a geek by him just getting his ass beat for 20 minutes. Really? <laughs> Oh, I don't oh know. here we go. King King has a good one. He says it's right there with Britt Baker versus Big Swole Dental Match. Whoa, I forgot about that one. <laughs> yeah, that Ooh. one that one cost Swole her career. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, <laughs> it's, it kind of did actually. Yeah, uh, yeah. Ooh, that was bad. I mean, like it's hard. To, there's been some bad matches on Dynamite, but yeah. I mean, like that Dark Order one stands out because of who was in the ring. And I've always, I've always kind of thought Jay White's a little overrated as far as the work goes. Like he had some really boring matches in new Japan. So, yeah. I mean, like but this was, I don't know, man. I mean, like I know Tony is loyal to Billy Gunn. You know, he's been there for, a, you know, from jump and, you know, the acclaimed are his or Tony's act and they love it, but God, this whole thing sucks. Yeah, like, and it's like, funny because it's like the it's still better than a lot of the garbage we had to sit through in 2023. But I mean, when the rest of the show is pretty good, it really sticks out how bad that was. 